All right, so here we have question 10 from the IB practice exam about the seashells that have the lengths normally distributed with mean 20, 25 and variance sigma squared. Uh, the first thing I would suggest is if you draw this little normal curve, put 25 right there, and then it tells you that the probability that x is less than 24.15 is 0.1446. So that shaded area right there. 0.1446. And then we know also that uh, the normal distribution is symmetric, and so the probability that it's less than 25 is half. And so what we can do to answer part A, where it asks about the probability between 24.15 and 25, that's going to equal 0 0.5 minus 0 0.1446 which gives me 0 0.3554, okay? Then the second idea is to find sigma, the standard deviation of x, is to use a z-score. And the z-score is on a standard normal curve, the probability that you're less than a certain value. And so what I do, what you can do with your calculator is your distribution button is right there on the vars, so you hit second, then you hit the distribution button, and you want to do an inverse norm because we're trying to figure out what the properties of the normal curve are. So we take inverse norm. We have an area of 0.1446 that was given to us, and that's the probability that's less than, and so we want to have it be a left tail distribution. And then we hit paste like that, and it gives us this value right here that's a z-score. So z is equal to your x value minus your mean divided by your standard deviation. So putting in the information, the calculator tells me this. So that's negative 1.0599 equals the x value. That means from our distribution, 24.15. The mu from our distribution is 25, the mean. The sigma is what we don't know. If you rearrange this equation, multiply by sigma, divide by that value right there, you'll have negative 0.85 divided by negative 1.0599. So let's calculate that, negative 0.85 divided by the number I just got is 0 0.802. Now, using that sigma, uh, we can find the probability that a certain seashell is length greater than 26 millimeters. Now we have the mu and the sigma. We have the mean and the standard deviation. And so we're going to go back to our distribution menu. And we're going to do the normal cumulative distribution function, option two, because we're looking at a, a range of values and we're trying to look at the cumulative probability over that. The cumulative asks for a lower bound and an upper bound. The question says greater than 26, so 26 is our lower bound. For the upper bound, there's theoretically no limit. You could have a gigantic seashell, so usually I just throw a bunch of nines in there. You know, it's not going to make a difference, really, how many nines you put in, as long as it's more than two of them. The mu is the mean, 25. The sigma is what we just calculated, 0.802 and hit enter until it pops out. And what I get is uh, that number right there, 0 .0 0 0.106. There we go. Now I'm going to keep that number and I'm going to erase the rest of the um, board because we're actually going to use that number to answer the next question. So 0 0.106, that's our probability. So when we look at question here, where it, it, it sort of shifts, it shifts from being looking at a, a, a continuous probability distribution to thinking about it as a discrete probability distribution. So you have 10 seashells, and we're looking at those that have lengths greater than 26. And so we're, we just found that probability, and now we have two situations. You're either greater than or you're not greater than. And so the probability of being greater than 26 
which we can write as P of Y. P of Y is equal to 0 0.106. And then we can also, and you should get in the habit of doing this, the P of not Y is whatever's left over, 1 minus the answer. So the probability of, of not being greater is 0 0.8. Nine, four. Okay, so find the expectation of y. And so the expectation of y right there is looking at the, here, let me pause real quick. So the reason I paused was to go back and look at the formula sheet. And we're looking here for the expectation and right when I look at the formula I see the expectation is pretty simple it's just n times p because you have n seashells each with a probability p of being greater than 26 so the expectation of y is pretty simple it's just 10 multiplied by 0 0.106 which is 1.06 so that means that if you Go and collect 10 seashells, you expect there to be about one that is greater than 26 millimeters long, which makes sense because about 10% of them have that property. Now find the probability that exactly three of these seashells have a length greater than 26 millimeters. And so what we want to think about is three are bigger than there are seven that are smaller. And so the probability of that would be you're going to have 0. 0.0. 0 0.106 to the third because three of them are bigger but then there are seven of them that are smaller 0 0.894 to the seven but then that's imagining that the first three that you find are longer and then the next seven are shorter so you actually need to think of how many different ways can you rearrange those objects so you have 10 seashells and you're choosing three of them that are going to be the ones that are longer so you can type that into your calculator. The choose is under math. Math, you go over to probability. Option three is NCR. So we go 10, choose three. Then we do 0 0.106 to the third, 0 0.894 to the seventh. And we get a very small probability, 0. 0, 0.065 2. I guess I should have probably done another space there. Okay, so that's the probability there. And then the last part of this question, a seashell selected at random has a length less than 26 millimeters. So they're telling us information. Whenever you get told extra information, you should be thinking of conditional probability. So conditional probability is right up here. So we do probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B. So we know that the probability that it has a length less than 26. So what are we saying? We're trying to find the probability that it's between 24.15 and 25, given that it is less than 26. So to write that would mean that it's the probability of being between these two values divided by the probability that it's less than 26 because that will fulfill probability of A and B divided by probability of B because if it's between 24.15 and 25 it's also less than 26. Okay so the probability of it being between 24.15 and 25, we found that earlier to be, let's look up at it. Ah, yes, 0.3554. So we have zero, oops, where's my marker? There we go, 0 0.3554 divided by the probability of being less than 26. That's what we found uh, with the P of not Y, so divided by 0 0.894, and that's just division, 0 0.3554 divided 
multiplied by 0 0.894 and we get 0 0.398. And there you go. And so I was really trying to show you how you can always go back to your formula sheet just for a little inspiration on how to address the problem. All right. Thanks. And feel free to ask more questions.